Welcome back to AM Live, and we have Karen, Pastor Karen. Fabulous to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I know you're one busy lady, uh -huh. and it's really nice to see you again. So introduce yourself, your church, and what we're going to talk about. So I'm Karen Siegfried. I'm rector of Trinity Episcopal Church in Sutton Creek, mm -hmm. and um, I want to present the gift of hope. It's a fabulous presentation that we're offering to the Amador community. We received a grant to do this. And uh, Joan Brock is the speaker. Amazing. And so I hope we can talk about her a little bit. Absolutely. And, and uh, she's going to present on September 7th at 2 o'clock at Trinity Church. September 7th, 2 o'clock. Is that a Sunday? It is a Sunday. Okay. Yeah. We're hoping everybody has eaten and done their morning You have your duties. fabulous. <laughs> you have a fabulous church I've attended, and I love listening to you speak, and, and I really do love all of the other people that are involved there. And uh, church is great. It's a great message. And then afterwards, you have this, like, gourmet spread of food which you know I'm like yeah food <laughs> and such nice people so you really have a great congregation and then shortly after that at two o'clock you say on Sunday the September 7th um, then we'll have the presentation by Joan right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good that's exciting how did you ever get her to come here well she is an international speaker mm -hmm. uh, but one of our parishioners is a friend oh. and uh, it just ha so happens that she is coming north to participate in a, a something else, mm -hmm. and so she just gave us the gift that she would come to Trinity and come to Amador County and speak to the people of Amador and mm -hmm. uh, with her wonderful message of hope and courage and inspiration. She's a really unique individual. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit of history on her? Yeah. So she was your typical mom and uh, wife, and uh, she had a, a, a newborn child, and then she went blind at the age of 32. And a couple of years later, she lost her husband to cancer unexpectedly. Oh, my goodness. So here you have a widow, uh, a single mom, and somebody who just went blind. Mm -hmm. And she realizes she has to take care of her daughter and to move forward in life. And so she made a decision. You know, she could either just wallow in her unfortunate circumstances mm -hmm. or use those challenges in life to move forward. And uh, so, I get know, the goosebumps just hearing about yeah, it. I and, do. Yeah, and so she went through a process like anybody else who has grief and disappointments in life and challenges. And she came out the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, she has written a couple of books, you mm -hmm. know. And one of the books was actually uh, translated into a, a, a movie. Oh, so and um, translated into different languages also. Right, so people all over the world um, wanting to hear what she has to say. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so now she's a little bit older. Her daughter's so she's grown up. Her, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, so she's an inspirational speaker. So people, you know, contract with her to come and speak. A lot of businesses do that. Uh, I'm sure there are uh, education facilities, health health uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, to try to capture and to inspire people, because all of us have challenges in life, all of us right. have problems, we, we, we have expectations of how life is going to turn out, and then we're disappointed. So now what do we do with that? Right. And so it's an inspiration. Um, I know in our own county, people are just facing tremendous challenges, you know, economic, uh, personal challenges, mm -hmm. health issues. Everything. It's just everything. A little bit of everything. And so how do you do, you know, how do you deal with that? You know, That's a good question. And, you know, a lot of it is innate. We know we do this if this happens. But a lot of it's learned. And mm -hmm. if we don't have someone like this fabulous speaker, Joan, or some sort of educational resources on how to improve, how to get through this, how to handle it, well, well where do you learn it from? Mm -hmm. You know, and just talking with your friends, you know, that's helpful, but it doesn't mean their information is information that works for you mm -hmm. and so when we have somebody like Joan who's willing to take her time and talk to people about getting through hardships and moving on with life that is like top-notch and if anybody is interested in that at all you have to come out and listen to her speak on September 7th mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so she talks a lot about hope and I think that's the difference between just talking with your friends and and uh, being inspired you know hope is ba being able uh, to see into the future that there are new possibilities, mm -hmm. even when the present moment uh, doesn't... Seems grim. Yeah, mm -hmm. it seems grim, and it gives you no evidence. You know, hope is like believing in the ocean when all you can see is a stream, mm -hmm. you know, and without hope, the human heart would break. Right. And so she's going to talk about uh, her own story, and we can see in that, that story this hope, this 
this possibility that there is something in the future no matter how dark things may be in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, that's really great news. And it it's, it's, it's something we need to hear mo more because it's, when we hear uh, it, it, a lot of times in the media, it's, it's just cynicism, like, well, you might as well give up, put your head in the sand it's and, true. and go into a closet and I agree. Die. I have a hard time you know, watching TV sometimes because it seems as though the news media, you know, of course, focuses on what sells, which is usually, you know, death and destruction and all that good right. stuff. And uh, but it's rare that you're going to find a show, especially a new show, that's going to capitalize and lift up a story of hope, mm -hmm. and especially one that applies to people's everyday living. Right. You know, that's I think right. the key there. It's not mm -hmm. this happened and wow, that was great and it was a miracle. That's all good too. Right. But how to get through day by day. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not like she's just some big hero or some Mother Teresa, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, some everyday person goes blind, loses a husband. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. And uh, to hear her story and yeah. encouragement and, mm -hmm. and organization, how you organize your personal and professional life in the face of those challenges. Right, so because I think, I think everything kind of just falls apart when you're in that kind of devastated feeling and okay so where do I start now mm -hmm. what do I do I get up in the morning what's my schedule how do I move on how do I get the resources and information that I need right. and uh, that's just really crucial so I'm really excited that she's gonna be here and speak to all of us I hope you have plenty of room I think you're gonna have a full house That'd be great yeah, That'd be great. yeah. it's great to share mm -hmm. uh, interesting stuff like that well that's wonderful and tell us a little bit about church and what's going on there so, you know, one of our emphasis is really to go out into the community and to partner with the Amador community and to reach out, you know. So we're still uh, trying to um, be very participatory in feeding programs, mm -hmm. you know. There's a lot of people in need of food. So yeah. the food bank, um, Breaking Bread with Friends, it's taken place every Saturday morning at Jackson uh, Methodist. We participate in that. We do food drives. Another thing we do is we have a very active health ministry program, and uh, so we're partnering a lot with uh, mental health uh, issues and um, depression. It's great uh, to hear. You know, that's really been in everyone's face since Robin Williams' death, and absolutely. you know, that's it's it's a serious issue. It's nothing to be ashamed of, and now people feel a little bit more like they can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, and in Amador County, we. Our mental health system needs a little help because we just don't have enough resources for the need. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I know that there are a lot of people working in this county to t see if we can't get a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. We have no psychiatric beds mm -hmm. for, in the hospitals. So um, right. you know, we're a little challenged. We're a little lacking of resources. A lot of people are trying to, to fill the, the void, but um, it's something that a rural community has a hard time attracting right. a large amount of mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. and so the ones we have are really working overtime. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so our mental, our, our uh, you know, health health program really tries to reach out in those areas that are are struggling in Amador County. Well, good. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Just give us a little information on how we can contact the church and get more information about Joan's speaking event. Right. So um, you can get on our website site trinitysettercreek.org or you can call the church 209-267-0255 um, mm -hmm. uh, there's stuff in the paper there's stuff on Facebook great uh, and that's September thing. 7th and so that's at 2 o'clock please come thank you Karen so much we'll be right back with you okay thank you <laughs>